morning. It's Wednesday, July 12th. I don't know if you remember this incident that happened back in 2020. The New York Police Department announced the deployment of one creature called DigiDog. It was a nickname for a small quadrupedal robot made by Boston Dynamics. The backlash was swift and severe. Critics cited privacy concerns, safety risks, and costs. But they hardly needed to make their case because DigiDog was creepy as hell. It went viral in a very bad way almost immediately, and it was taken off the streets within a few months. And then Mayor Bill de Blasio, who was the mayor of New York at that time, claimed through a spokesperson to be glad they were gone. Now Mayor Adams has different plans. Digi Dog is gone. He's out of the dog pond, so to speak. That's how he raised it on Tuesday. And now Digi Dog has a friend. Yes, that's right. Digi Dog has a friend. Mayor Adams had a press conference in Times Square, who was joined by the NYPD leadership, announced the acquisition of two digi dogs, Boston Dynamics spot robots to be specific, and they cost seven hundred fifty thousand dollars according to the NYPD. But the cost of the digi dogs was covered by forfeiture money. I don't know what that really means, but apparently it means that the taxpayers weren't paying for these two dogs yet. And the New York City PD also announced that it would be leasing a single K5 autonomous security robot for testing, with its first assignments either in Times Square or the subway station. This is a dynamic shift in the thinking processes, but I am all in favor of trying these things out. So for a decade now, Boston Dynamics has been releasing unsettling demo videos of its two- and four-legged creatures, robots, not creatures, robots. So Boston Dynamics, which is now owned by Hyundai, pledged last year not to weaponize its robots. These robots have been used elsewhere by bomb squads. And the New York Police Department says they could be used for surveillance or in hostage situations, which would be a good thing because it would keep policemen out of the dangerous business of rescuing people or doing whatever needs to be done in a hostage situation. So one of the heads of the police department said, think about this robot as if it's a Roomba. A Roomba is a vacuum robot. I happen to own one of those things. And they water around the carpet and they suck up everything. And that's what he wants you to believe the K-5 is capable of doing. The K-5 is a rolling surveillance device equipped with cameras, sensors, and communications hardware. And so, in dangerous situations, it can be out there viewing things and sucking up the device and transmitting that information to humans who could take action. And I think that is a great, great idea. And this leads me to the thinking process associated with many, many people who fear robots for a much different reason. Robots are a threat to their job security. In many, many cases, people are working jobs that robots could do. And we as a society have to take that into consideration when we create robots and choose to use them. There has to be a plan in place for when robots replace 
human activities. Now, the police department robots are different in many ways because they're doing a job that people would find extremely dangerous to do at all times. But when robots are doing just plain, ordinary jobs that people could do, there should be some compensation associated with those robots. Compensation for the people who lost their jobs. Compensation to the government for the fact that the robot has taken a person's job and is not paying appropriate taxes, etc. So robotics is on our lives scale. Robots are going to become more and more a part of our day-to-day living. So I think we have to think hard about the effects of robots on the human community beyond the fact that they can help us doing dangerous work. They can help us do ordinary things just like my Roomba does. So if we look at the big picture and envision that in 10 or 20 years, many, many jobs that people are doing now will have disappeared from the workplace. So I believe that there are adjustments that need to be made for the totality of our citizens. So how about thinking of a national 35 or 32 hour work week for humans? And how about thinking about a tax on the robots that do the work? How about each robot has to pay taxes like a human would take? So if you replace 20 employees, with several robots, then those robots should be costing that company in taxes to the government whatever they would have had to pay on behalf of the humans doing that work. And what about certain other things that go with having robots? Like depreciation allowance. You buy a robot and you depreciate it over time. And he saves you more money. All of those things should be taken into consideration if we are going to have a robotic society. But on the other hand, think about this also. If robots are taking work away from humans, then what are humans going to do with their spare time? Not everybody is equipped to adjust to having more spare time. There are many in our society who fail badly when they retire and are left with days with nothing to do and try to figure out what they should do with their time, with their spare time. And I speak from experience because when I retired 15 years ago, I had to find a place where I could do things that would keep me busy and not sit around the house. And I found that. I found a great organization to attend the Suffolk Y JCC. And I found a great activity that I could continue doing, so I work at that half a day. But not everybody is equipped to do that. There should be something in our society that offers a meaningful experience that helps not only the unemployed person and the retired person, but offers everybody a chance to contribute to what I will call the robotic revolution. Have a great day. See you in the morning. Bye.